Hello and welcome to Creator Spaces, the podcast on a mission to reignite real world connection. I'm Molly Cooper and every episode I share the stories behind incredible people doing brilliant things in the world of travel, design and hospitality. From the founders and owners who have brought spaces to life, to chefs, writers, designers and many, many more, join me as I sit down with the teams connecting people and places across the country. I'm also incredibly excited to share that you will soon be able to connect with Britain's best slow living spaces and under the radar finds on the brand new Curated Spaces platform. From weekly giveaways to flash sales and last minute availability, we're making 2024 the year of the stake with a curated collection of exceptional spaces to stay around the UK. Head to our website to get yourself on that early bird list and you can bag yourself some pretty lovely prizes in our pre-launch giveaway. Now, without further ado, let's get into today's conversation. In today's Snapshot episode, we're talking all about art with Lucy Kent, founder of the Art for Charity Collective. This global community of artists champions the power of art to make a positive impact by raising funds and awareness for charities through live auctions, exhibitions and art consultancy. Lucy, welcome to the podcast. It's such a pleasure to be chatting with you today. How are you doing? Thanks for having me, Molly. I'm really, really well, thanks. I'm just fresh out of my studio. I'm glad it's not a visual because I'm in my boiler suit. (laughs) (laughs) No, I love it. Boiler suit chic. I'm on a background. I think we can see some of the pieces that we might talk about today. That's so fun and fresh. Exactly. Oh, I love it. Oh, well, I can't wait to dive into ACC. But before we do, I'd actually love to hear a bit about you and your background and how you've ended up um, talking to me today. Sure thing. So I'm a painter myself. So I've been a practicing artist since I left art school when I was 21. Um, I trained in portraiture. I've had quite the journey. I sort of started in portraiture, went into abstract Um, And then kind of came back to painting the land, which is sort of what I always wanted to do, really. And with a move to the countryside, that kind of, you know, timed in quite well. So I'm a contemporary landscape painter and um, and then started ACC at the beginning of lockdown in 2020. So... So she, she's a lockdown baby. <laughs> a lockdown baby um, that has continued. So that is brilliant. Um, but a bit of a juggle, but, you know, a juggle that I love. Yeah. And I think it's such a cool concept to take the power of art. I feel like art in itself can be quite this huge like topic. Like, where do you begin? How do you even find stuff you like? We've all trudged around those like, you know, portrait galleries and you're finding it quite hard to connect with the pieces or you don't quite yeah, get why is that so good and that what you know, it's so hard to get your head around, whereas this makes it so fun and accessible. And if people listening haven't checked you out, I'd really recommend heading to the website. There's some amazing artists on there. Um so I'd love to hear a bit about that first idea and where the seed sort of came from and what bringing it to life was like. Definitely. So in lockdown, um, alongside lots of other people in, in all professions, you know, it had its challenges. Um, and it, for artists, our kind of exhibitions and, you know, avenue to making sales was sort of all shut down. So this wonderful artist, Matthew Burrows, you might have heard about it. He set up an initiative called the Artist Support Pledge, which was for artists globally, wherever you were, and the only sort of um, rule, I guess, was that you sold your work for no more than two hundred pounds, and then when you made a thousand pounds of sales, you then pledged to buy another artist's work back. So it created this really cool sort of little micro economy. And suddenly, um, with that, I was doing really well. Very grateful to Matthew Burrows, and um, and I started to think, you know, is there a way of giving back to our wider community, not just sort of artists, um, because, you know, obviously charities and um, hospices actually is what I started raising for, obviously had all their avenues for funding um, shut down as well. So I started raising for a local hospice where my granny um, actually died and they cared for her very well at the end of her life. So I started raising for them. And then lots of my sort of artists, peers and friends kind of um, got wind of it and said, Oh my God, I'd love to get involved. So it sort of grew from there, really. Um, and also, I'm an artist, but I also love other people's art. <laughs> if I collect art forever, um, I've had to slightly put a kibosh on it because I'm trying to build my studio. But I love, love other artists' work. So I'm constantly looking around, constantly finding inspiration from other artists, but also just loving other artists' work. So it sort of um, it grew from there, really. And now it's grown very organically, which I've loved. Um, it's been very busy, which is 
you know, sometimes a challenge alongside my practice, but I find it so rewarding. And yeah, we've now, we're now over 100 artists globally. Um, and we've raised over £300,000 for different charities since we began. That's amazing. Go on yeah. a lifetime project. I was busy baking banana bread. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not a baker, so... <laughs> I cry if I have to bake. <laughs> oh, amazing. And I think that's such a cool, I love bringing together these different communities and finding that potential for collaboration. It's such, like you say, an organic, natural way. It feels so authentic and lovely and like a really, like a wonderful intention was there. And I think that's so, so special. Um, So tell me a bit about what you look for in the artists that come in and work with ACC. Are you looking for particular styles or aesthetics or how do you sort of create that connection? Um, so I curate all the work. So I guess the only sort of theme that really runs through it is that I love it. <laughs> and there's nothing that I wouldn't have on my own wall. But it's a really, really diverse, eclectic mix of art. I mean, I'm a landscape painter, but I love so many different genres of art, so many different mediums. Um, we've got photographers, we've got ceramicists, we've got other landscape painters, we've got abstract painters. There's a really, really wide mixture of artists. And it's not um, exclusively um, female, um, but there are a lot of women artists. I really sort of try to represent kind of um, underrepresented minorities, be it female, because there's still a huge discrepancy between what male artists are paid to female, um, or whether that's artists from um, different ethnicities, different cultures, different countries. We've got artists in Indonesia. Um, I really love to sort of exactly what you said before. It's the community. It's the bringing together of everyone, and it's providing a platform for um, for emerging artists, for other artists who might not be, have access to um, sales, you know, and just bringing all of our artists to a sort of a sales platform, and hopefully giving them lots of sales and you know exposure. Yeah, I love that. And I know you've done some really cool collabs with some with some amazing spaces that have actually been on the podcast. So you were at Kin House, weren't you? And Emmy Wine Studio. Um, we haven't done Kin House yet. We've had to park it. No. <laughs> but we, are, we are definitely still in chats with them. I absolutely love that space. Mm-hmm. So we it's pipeline stuff. It will happen at some point, but it, we were just finding the right time. Um, Amy, yes, we have. Um, we curated their art. We've just had a workshop there, actually, because... Aside from just raising money for charities, um, particularly this year, we're really, really looking at how we can make um, meaningful impact in other ways. So three of our artists, myself included, and then Natalia Bagnuska just had hers, have donated their time to teach a workshop, and then all those ticket sales goes to charity. So that was at AMI, and that was really fun. Um, and then we had time. I don't know if you've done a... Love time. Yeah. We have been time. Oh, we've got so many already. Look at this. <laughs> yeah, so we we, um, we did a collaboration with time at the end of last year in support of Tusk, and that was really fun. Um, so, yes, lots of exciting stuff. I'm kind of grabbing everything that comes my way, mm-hmm. really. And I think that's so cool to create this, like, global online community, especially in a lockdown where everything shifted online and now we're starting to bring it into the into the real world as well and exactly. it on. I think that's really that's cool. exactly it. Yeah. yeah and now for anyone listening or actually selfishly for me I've <laughs> I've got a flat and I'm quite a beige person and my walls are all quite beige and I've tried to find <laughs> art but I can never I never quite know what I'm looking for or how to find it I don't know what style I like I don't know if it's going to be a trend and I'm going to be cringing that I bought that you know <laughs> weird piece earlier so like how do you yeah, even start it. thinking about buying your first art pieces or exploring what's out there just feels like such a minefield you've got to work your way around I know it is hard and I guess another sort of um what we try and do also is just really sort of break down those barriers of um have you know this concept that art is scary you know walking into a gallery can be scary so um I hang a lot of the art at home we built a house kind of three years ago so trying to make it more sort of accessible in that way hang art in spaces so you can see what it'll look like you know amongst interior bits and bobs um but what I look for what I always say is just kind of ignore the trends there's no trend buy what you love if something sort of you know makes your heart go and you know gets your gut you know that you love it um and that's sort of you know that's how I bought my first painting um but if you're sort of on a budget prints are a really really great kind of access point um they're sort of perhaps more affordable you can frame them really coolly um they can bring lots of color and sort of you know 
a pal to a space. Um, so yeah, I think um, lots of different ways, really. Mm-hmm. I love that. It was interesting because I spoke to one person the other day, and I asked yeah. if you had if you could save one thing from your home. Um, if it was like burning down and she said this painting that I got given as a gift I think it was her 18th or 21st and I thought that was such a lovely answer and like just shows you how powerful it can be to buy or be gifted art definitely. and how that really stays with someone yeah. definitely I think um, yeah for me art is the most sort of special and unique present it's not a throwaway thing it stays with you forever it's a real sort of I hang all my favorite pieces on the wall opposite my bed so I sort of wake up every morning and that's what I see and I look at and you know they all take you on a bit of a journey they're all very different um, <laughs> I think I'm the opposite to you because I'm I've got a colour problem. Um, So I'm a real colourist. So for me, sort of more is more like pattern on pattern on pattern. Um, But we have so many different kind of artists and pieces. So anything that suits, you know, your requirements, we can definitely find some more muted things for you. (laughs) (laughs) No, I want to get more colour and more pattern. I haven't gone around and see all these amazing spaces. I'm now like, ooh, maybe I need to paint all my walls, like bright, whatever. I have yeah. quite a bit in the bullet. Yeah. So maybe artwork's quite a nice way to, you know, a stepping stone into the land definitely. of colour and prints. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. And I think, you know, art can really speak to other bits in your room. So if you want to start off gently, um, you know, buy something that has a bit of colour and then maybe like match it to a cushion that has a bit of colour. And then you're slowly introducing that kind of colour to your space. Oh, I love that. It's so clever. Key it all together. Ooh. And that just rhymed. Wow. Um, <laughs> and then you just spoke about all the amazing artists you have and like such a cool collection. Are there any that you're really excited about? We're just going into 2024. So are there any people you've got your eye on this year or, or work you're particularly excited to share over the next few months? Yeah, so we've got, I mean, I love all our artists. They're all incredible in different ways. Um, an artist that I really love is called Millicent Straker. Um, and she does sort of screen printing, um, again, quite sort of bright layered pieces. And she did an apprenticeship, I think, with one of my favorite artists who's very established now, Tom Hammock. So they're sort of large scale screen prints and quite lyrical little figures in them. Um, who else? Um, I mean, so many, I couldn't quite sort of pick out. I don't want to, you know, I love all of them. It's like asking you to uh, pick a favourite child soil. It's pick such a favourite really child. question. <laughs> I can't do it. I love all of them. Oh, great answer then. And then in terms of maybe people who are artists or they're just beginning on their journey of painting, um, do you have any words of advice? Obviously, you've been there, you've lived that process, you're now supporting other artists. Is there anything you would advise them or any direction you point them in as they're starting out on their own artist journey? Definitely. In fact, I got a message on Instagram this morning asking that exact question Uh Um, from an artist who's just starting out. So what I'd say, which was kind of the best advice that was given to me, um, as I told you, I sort of trained in portraiture. I had a real old journey to get to uh, landscape painting. And I remember sort of showing my work to a gallery at, at, you know, one point at the start. And they just said, there's just too much on there, you know. You're, you're really great at everything you do, but it's portraits, abstract, landscape. We don't quite know where to go. So what I would say is just pick your most favorite thing, the thing that really speaks to you um, and paint that and concentrate on that. And that's how your sort of your authentic voice, I think, is nurtured and grows. And then you kind of hone your own style. And, and you know, that's how you kind of your work gets recognizable and it's you. So, yeah. Um, without something to nap, be true to yourself, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Not nap at all. And actually really aligned with what you were saying about when it comes to buying art, like follow your gut, buy what makes you feel good. Look for those pieces Definitely. that just spark joy in you. I think that's such a lovely and timeless message for people, wherever they are in their art journey. Yeah, definitely. I think so. Oh, it's been so lovely chatting about all things art. I do have a quick fire round before we wrap up, if you're up for it. Okay, Okay, so you're a landscape painter. If you could paint one landscape in the world, what would it be? Oh, crikey. I mean, so many. Um, India is very, very high on my list at the moment, Varanasi. Um, I'm more sort of like big sky, big land. So I went to the desert last year in California. I'd really love to go back there. So that was Joshua Tree. Um, so many. Again, it's a bit like picking my favourite child. 
<laughs> oh, I know. And then my next question was going to be, Anna, do you have any favourite spaces in the UK to paint or you return back to time and time again? Yes, I'm a big, um, I love going to the coast. So Devon, Dorset, Cornwall, um, Jurassic Coast. I love all that. Um, I go back there a lot every year, actually. Are you a bit of a water baby? I am. I am. One day I will live by the sea. <laughs> I love it. And out of all the charities you've partnered with at ACC, are there any you'd like to give a special shout out to that people should go and check out? Yes, definitely. My very, very wonderful friends um, called A Space Between, who we've supported a few times and actually, um, and they make art sort of more widely accessible as a therapeutic tool. Um, They do that by running workshops and delivering creative care packages to hospitals, um, other isolated communities, um, care homes, um, refugee centres. So lots of sort of different ways that they kind of um, bring art and um, help people through that. Oh, that so sounds very, very yeah. yeah, I'm going to check them out straight away after Please this. Do. And then finally, what's one piece that you have in your home that just sparks such joy whenever you see it? Um, again, a really difficult question. Um, I have so much art. Um, I love a piece by Claudia Legg, who's a really brilliant photographer. She specializes in underwater photography. And I've got a very large photograph of hers called Empty Swimming Pool, which is in the center of our room and everyone comments on it. It's almost like a painting and it's really sort of graphic and colorful and brilliant. And I love it. That sounds gorgeous. Gosh, you are a water baby, aren't you? Look at you. Yeah, I do. I love water. Oh, oh, well, it's been so lovely chatting. Thank you so much. Been very inspired to go and start my own art collection, bring that colour into the home. Um, Definitely. Thank you so much for chatting with me. Thank you so much, Molly. Lovely to chat. Wow, if you're anything like me and you've been trying to get into art for so long and just didn't know where to start, that was incredibly helpful. Thank you so much, Lucy, for bringing the world of art and artists to life. I can't wait to start my own collector's journey. And thank you, of course, to all you lovely listeners who tune in week after week. Thank you for your kind words, reviews and ratings. It really means the world and keeps the podcast going. I'm also incredibly excited to announce that the Curated Spaces podcast is soon to become the Curated Spaces platform where we'll be connecting curious travellers with the best slow living spaces and under the radar finds around the country. If this sounds like your kind of thing, then please do head to our website to get yourself on that early bird list and keep your ears filled as we start to officially count down to launch in the next few weeks. In the meantime, I will of course see you next time for more Curated Spaces.